I I don't know why. I I can't tell you why. I can't tell you why. Um, Raj. <laughs> See you guys, I, I, I love this audience. I love you guys. You guys are so real. I like I like your audience. <laughs> of you, just give me a show of hands. How many of you think you are in love? You are in love or you think you are in love? Put up your hand. Yes, let's go. Oh. <laughs> so I'm talking to the right group. How many of you, how many of you have ever been embarrassed by the book of Sons of Soul? Reading it. How many of you have used it in Bible study with your friend, non-unbelieving friend? No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you should. Uh, how many of you believe that all scripture is inspired by God? Amen. 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 You got me there. <laughs> so does it include this one also? Does it include this one also? It should. Oh. Now I, I I love this. I love this book. I, I you know I, I I don't know why Raj uh, I've asked him to teach this book. Um I my first guess was. Uh, he was probably too embarrassed to teach this book, supported a Nigerian. To teach this book. <laughs> you know, but I love the Songs of Songs. I, I love the Songs of Songs. It's, um, it's in the Bible for a reason. And that's what we're going to be looking at right now. Uh, if you look at 1 Kings chapter 4, um, in verse 29, 1 Kings 4, verse 29, uh, we are told that God gave Solomon wisdom and every great insight and a breadth of understanding as measureless as a sand on the seashore. This is exaggeration for effect, by the way. Um, the verse that says, Solomon's wisdom was greater than the wisdom of all the men of the East. And now it's interesting, that wouldn't say all the women of the East, yeah. because it's greater than all the men of the East, but the women from the East had to come and learn, amen? And greater than all the wisdom of Egypt, he was wiser than any other man, including Ethan, the, the, the Israelites, wiser than Hermon, uh, you know, Kakol, you know, Dada, the son of Mahol, and his fame spread to all the surrounding nations. Now in verse 32, he says, Solomon spoke 3,000 proverbs, and his songs numbered 1,005. Can you imagine? Solomon's song numbered 1,005, and what we're about to look at is the, probably the only surviving song of Solomon. So this is the song of songs of Solomon, uh, of all the songs. So it's very good to us to pay attention to that, that song. So, you know, the name uh, is Songs of Songs or Songs of Solomon. And just like I mentioned where, when we're talking about the book of Ecclesiastes, when they put the article of he actually puts an emphasis on me. So this is the song, the biggest song of all songs. So that's why you should be, I mean, you, 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 you know, you, you guys, the Psalms, why not also look at the songs of songs? You know, just like Jesus Christ, the Lord of Law, the King of Kings and everything. You know, so it's very Solomonic uh, in authorship. Uh, you know, some have tried to argue, um, they, you know, maybe it was written by somebody else. Maybe it was uh, um, a king after him or one of his grand. It, but definitely it was about Solomon. In the way I was written, uh, it, so it could be a song of song about Solomon or of Solomon or for Solomon, but everything is tied to Solomon. And if you read through there, it actually mentioned Solomon, you know, the king and everything. So, and it's, it falls under that genre that we call the wisdom literatures. It's a love poem and it's very erotic. It's an erotic love poem. Uh, so don't be um, embarrassed or anything. Mm -hmm. So it's basically the story is a romance, you know, between three people. And I'm going to be explaining to you very soon. Okay? It's, a, it's a romance between two people and, uh, and plus one. And it's always difficult to identify who the speaker is if you don't read carefully. If you don't read in context, you, you, are not, you, you might be confused who the speaker, who is speaking, is it the beloved or the loved, 
um, you know, it, it, it gives a lot, lot of, um, uh, it points us to, uh, you know, plants, to animals, the geography of Israel. Uh, it's very in, 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 intricate. It's, it has this, a, you know, a symmetry, you know, that shows a unity of structure and of authorship. So it doesn't look like something that several people wrote. However, you know, there are about three different, um, or let's say, interpretive methods uh, that have been used on this book. One, we have people who have claimed that it's purely drama. Uh, it's a, it's a two-character drama. That is Solomon and this strange Shamite woman, this strange Shamite girl. And, and some will say, no, 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 no. It's a three-character love triangle. And, and here, the people who hold this view see Solomon and the Shunammite as the main characters. However, this woman is not in love with Solomon, but in love with somebody else. In fact, a shepherd boy, a, you know, a country boy in chapter two, verse three, to chapter three, verse five, you see that, and also chapter seven, verse 10. You know, so in, 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 you know, in this scenario, Solomon is that guy who wants to hold you know, this girl, and this girl is saying, method that you choose, we have its pros and its challenges. There is a pros and its challenges. Now, you know, just like a book like you know, like this, um, I, it's obvious that you know this book has posed some challenges over the century, especially when the Bible is viewed as a holy book. So, as a holy book, you are supposed to find things like Leviticus, yes, Exodus, mm -mm, you know, a, a kind of a narrative. You can find this that like the prophet challenging for about sin, about sin, about, you know, don't go into idolatry, don't go into, you know, so then you don't have this strange book that is dedicated towards this erotic love affair. You know, so people now began to look at it from an allegorical point of view. They now begin to now allegorize it. Okay, maybe this poem, and, and they have the basis to actually do that. They just, they have a basis because if you look at the book of, uh, uh, you know, Ezekiel and some other books, you know, God is seen as, as, as the suitor, and Israel or Samaria, in, in, you know, as the case may be sometimes, is seen as, as the virgin. Uh, you know, God has come there. If you look at the New Testament, you, you see Christ as a bridegroom and the church as a bride. You know, so it's kind of safer. It's actually say, you know, safer, you know, to just uh, allegorize it. You know, so, but that is not the translation that I would or the translation that I would choose. I, I, yeah, you, you can allegorize it. And of course, when I talk about, you know, um, allegory, I, allegory is basically, you know, choosing, you know, something and um, pointing out a deeper meaning. It's a story or a poem or a picture which can be interpreted to reveal a hidden meaning. So people say, okay, well, yeah, it's not just about sex. It's not about love. It's not about whatever, you know, there is something bigger. Now, yes, you can do that and get away, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know with it. But as a Bible scholar, I also have to read you know, between the lines. What is it saying? It is purely a story about romance between the young man and his intended bride. And that is where I want to focus on today. Um, not the allegory. Yes, we can allegorize it. You know, it means, uh, you know, Israel, it means God wants to take Israel and all those stuff. So you can do that. You know, but I'd rather also focus on the face value, what is it really saying? And so let's take a dive into it. Um, the celebratory um, you know, view of it, it talks about true love waiting. Now, because of time, we're not going to go through it. I'll show you guys, really, it's a very short book, just eight chapters long, and you have to read it slowly. In fact, if, if you want to really enjoy this book, I don't know how many of you have the Bible Experience uh, audio Bible. Um, at the point, it was the fastest selling audio audio book in the world, uh, that's the NIV, uh, you know, try playing the songs of songs, uh, you know, you, you know, through the audio Bible, that's uh, Bible experience. And uh, in the Bible experience, you know, they, they actually got about 700 artists, uh, actors and actresses and musicians, I mean, like Heavy D, um, you know, Desi Washington, his wife, uh, name it, everybody that can, you can think of, even a Nigerian, uh, you, know, you, know, you, know, you know, maybe it's a pastor, pastors and everything. You know, so they actually got there's a Washington and his wife, uh, you know, to, to do the voiceover on some stuff. And there's a Washington actually confessed many years, uh, you know, some months later that at that point they were doing that project, he was actually having a problem in his marriage. 
were having problems in his marriage. And he confessed that reading the songs of songs to his wife, we were reading together, actually saved his marriage. So he will read between the parts of the man, you know, the, the male parts, and the wife will read the female part. And there's no way two couples will read those poems to themselves and they will not fall in love again, over and over again. You know, so, you know, there is wisdom in it. I would say that all scripture is inspired by God. Uh, you know, so it's, um, uh, it, it, during the fourth century, the song Nana began to have this spiritualized, uh, this thing, because, uh, you know, um, if you look at what the nurses thought, you know, in nurses, they were like, flesh is bad, matter is bad, the spirit is good. So anything that is physical, they need to template. And by the fourth century, uh, you know, what, 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 one of the books that took a hit was the Songs of Souls. So people now began to spiritualize it. So don't, don't think about love, don't think about sex, don't think about woman, don't think about the man, don't think about. So what do I think about? Just think about God. Okay, so that's going to be hard for you know for, for me. Um, when when look, look at the, the you know the descriptive terms describing the man, and and, he, and the man describing the woman, he said, man, just looking at you, sister, your hair is like the flock of sheep. Now don't say that to a sister. That's going to be very weird. You know, boy, it makes a, you know it means a lot. You know, your teeth are all in shape. They're they are like, they're like, they're like, they're like sheep that don't be shown. Everything is just perfect. You know, your neck is like the tower of David. Every single thing. You know, here in Nigeria, we could call this skeleton, skeleton. You know, you're walking skeleton. You know, so when you read that, it, 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 it actually brings us some, some emotions in you. So those imageries, now the popular imageries are, oh, his banner over me is love. We sing about that one. Okay? You say, Jesus Christ, the rose of Sharon. It's in that book too. It lily is a lily of the valley, a brighter morning star, whatever. We like we like those ones too. But what about the core of the book? And that's where I'm going to be um, spending the next few few minutes talking about. So I want you to please go into this imaginary world with with me. I want you to imagine. Yes, written by Solomon, or for Solomon, or about Solomon. You know, in Songs of Songs, chapter one, verse one, said the Song of Song, which is Solomon's. You know, you know, this was either written by Solomon or about Solomon. Then in that go, he said, in, in, in verse 5, he said, I am very dark, but lovely. When I thought about that, I, I, I thought about the, you know, the hair relaxer that my wife used, used for many years. It's called dark and lovely. That's actually where they got that one, dark and lovely. You know, all daughters of Jerusalem, like the tents of Kiva, like the curtain of Solomon. What is that woman saying? This is a shepherd girl who has spent so much time in the sun, and she turned. That, that's what, 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 you know, what happened there. You know, he just said, do not gaze on me because, why? You know, because I'm dark. Because the sun has looked upon me. My mother's sons were angry with me. They made me keeper of the vineyard. But my, you know, you know, but my own vineyard, I have not kept. I have not kept my body very well every single You know, so this kind of we're talking about a princess. This is not a princess somewhere who was raised in the palace. You know, this is not, a, you know, a, a, a girl who, who knew, you know, what palace life, life was about. This was a girl who was conscripted. This was a girl who was maybe who, who, who was taken against her wish. Solomon saw her. You know, then in verse 7, he said, Tell me to whom my soul loves, where you pastor your flock. Now he's talking about his real love, the real love, where you you know make it lie down at noon. For for you know, for why should I be like one who fails herself because the flock of my companions? Solomon never did any media job in his life. He was, you know, raised you know, up in the palace. You know, so this was actually a dialogue between Solomon trying to woo this virgin girl, this dusky, this Shunammite, you know, girl. And all along, what the Shunammite was saying was not about Solomon. She, you know, she was recollecting her love, her compassion, her feelings for this shepherd guy. That she it shall be betrayed to love. And so if you read it with that, then it makes more sense. In verse 9, it says, I compare you, my love, to a mare amongst Pharaoh's chariots. Your cheeks are lovely with, with ornaments, your neck with strings of jewel. Solomon's now in another began to woo her. We, we know, we know, we know, we, we, we make a few, you know, ornaments of gold, studded with silver. She's you know, Solomon I was attempted to love her. You know, with precious stones and with, with, with all these things, but the girl's mind remained resolute. So, in the midst of Solomon's seduction, you know, she remembers her shepherd lover. 
and speak of him in a way that recalls her time in the vineyard. Listen to, to what he said. He said, while the king was, was, was on his couch, my nerd gave forth its fragrance. You know, my beloved is to me a scarlet of myrrh that lies between my breasts. My beloved is to me a cluster of henna bosom in the vineyard of God. So why Solomon is there trying to do his own thing? Solomon was, was smelling of his nice Jojo Armani or his uh, whatever. This woman was thinking about, oh man, just, you know, this guy walks in here, because he's a shepherd boy, you, you, you'll you find the scent of goats and all this stuff, of men that he hang around them because of the scent, he hang all, all these men around them. You know, so she talks about the love between her and this you know, shepherd, that she was betrothed to actually marry. He said, beloved, you are beautiful. My love, behold, you are beautiful. Your eyes are doves. Behold, you are beautiful. My, you know, my beloved, truly delightful. And she goes on and on talking about this young man. And of course, despite being taken by Solomon, you know, to be a member of his harem, you know, she longs to return to the village where, you know, her, you know, her, you know, her, her, her shepherd boy actually lives. Then she looks back at where she's coming from. He said, you know, uh, you know, on my bed by night, I sought him whom I so loved. I sought him but found him not. I will rise down and go about the, you know, you know, the, the, the city and the streets and in the square. I will seek him to whom my soul love. I, I sought after him but found him not. So she actually escaped after a while. Now the time she was roaming around the city, you know, the guards found her and brought her back. The watchman found, found me as, as he went about the city. Seeing him, whom I so love. Now, if she was, of course, she knows best Solomon. Can be for the landing here, you know, just just because of time. So, if you begin to read this in its right way, you will not know that true love actually waits. You know, for those of you, you know, who are in love here, some of you maybe you are doing long distance relationship, maybe whatever. We will wait. You wait. You don't, don't be in a hurry. Don't be in a hurry. Wait for the right time. You know, because there is wisdom in this monogamous, you know, monogamous heterosexual relationship here. Is to teach Hebrew men and women about true romantic love that is sick. Don't run into immorality. You know, you know, you know, you know, because the way out for many people today is pornography. And just by the way, I was so embarrassed. Um, we thought it was Malaysia, you know, was the king of. Uh, you know, downloading pornographic stuff. Just about a few weeks ago, the new stats, you know, came out and Nigeria was number one, followed by Ghana. I was so embarrassed. I said, wow. And all this thing happened because of the lockdown. You know, so pornography is not the answer. Uh, you know, internet sex is not the answer. Life sex is not the answer. Uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 homosexual videos is not the answer. Masturbation is not the answer. Lots of the answer. The answer is you waiting. You know, so there's evidence of celebrating fashion here. This song is very, very uh, moral in purpose. Try to teach us, you know, you know, the purpose. And this girl kept herself pure. And if you look at it, they asked her, oh, it, it, you know, has your door been broken down? I said, no, my door is still locked up. I'm still a virgin. <laughs> my door is still locked up. No matter what Solomon tried, he did not succeed with her until she went back. And her brothers and her parents, that, you know, took her in. And eventually she was not reconciled or she was taken to the to whom she to go, you know, she's supposed to marry. I even went, you know, when, when they met under the tree, when they met on the tree, whatever, they were still pure until the time of their wedding ceremony. So all scripture inspired by God. And this ability is to teach us that, you know, that you know, let's say this kind of wisdom. So to keep yourself pure. In First Corinthians 6, 12, he said, everything is permissible for me, but not everything is beneficial. You can do anything. You can go get them around. You can watch pornography movie. Nobody's seeing you on your phone. You can whatever. But not everything is permissible for me. Not everything is permissible. He said, I will not be mastered by anything. In, you know, in chapter 10, you know, verse 23, 1 Corinthians reads, everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible, but not everything is constructive. No one should seek for his own good. You know, there, there's an experiment I performed uh, in our campus, you know, ministry, uh, you know, to teach a lesson in, in staying pure and, 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 and just the benefits. I, I, I brought um, masking tape, and what I did was, you know, I'd tear out the, you know, the tape, 
and the experiment was to stick, stick the tape on the back of each you know, you know, disciple. You know, stuck, you know, stuck the tape at the back of each disciple. And the whole game is that we're going to go around fellowship. What we're going to do, we're going to be removing the tape and we're going to put on somebody else. And we remove. And after about 15 minutes or so, you're going to find after a while, the adhesive on the tape will not hold and it begins to fall off. Now, this is what happens when you have sex. Mm-hmm. There's a connection with someone. For people who go around having multiple sex partners, mm-hmm. even when they get married, it is, it is very hard, almost impossible, very hard to stick with a partner. It's very, very hard to stick with a partner. Because there, there, there's, something, there's, there's something in your brain, you know, there's some chemical that's released each time. And that chemical is chemical of, 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 of attachment. It attaches you to someone that's a good bond. But, you know, but, but, but when you go around having multiple sex partners and you're you spending, after a while, you, you don't know, you are confused. Your mind, you know, your dopamine is confused. And so you had. So no matter, so people think, oh, let, let me go and see pleasure. When I get married, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start being immoral. It doesn't work that way. In fact, if that person gets married, it makes it worse. Because right now, there's a sense of confinement. You are confined to just one person. And, and you know, and like we say, you know, in Nigeria, that's, Marriage is like watching DSTV. Amen? You can only do one channel at a time. <laughs> <laughs> Someone say, well, I can have multiple bouquet. I can have do multiple bouquet. That is called polygamy. I'm not going to do that. So you can have one TV here, one TV there. You can be switching. No, that's so confusing. So, there is actually, and, and, you know, and I praise God. I, 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 I don't know why. I don't know how. But, but I praise God that I remain pure all my life as a single person mm-hmm. to get you know my so the first time I was gonna have sex with a woman, I married. Mm-hmm. The woman I married, you know, whatever. And, and now I understand this is how it works. Mm-hmm. And that's why I teach it to other people. You know, I can travel, I try, I do a lot of tra- traveling, whatever. My eyes does not go to any other woman. Mm-hmm. My eyes don't go, my mind does not straight to any other woman. And my wife knows knows that. My eyes, my mind does not go to any other, you know, no woman. And I think it's, it's a security. As, as disciples, as ministers, it's a security that, that we need to, you know, create. So, you know, you know when, 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 I, when I teach this, you know, you know, for this book, I point these things out. In chapter 2, it says, daughters of Jerusalem, I charge you by the gazelles and by the doors of the field. Do not arouse or awaken love until so desired. Don't do it. Because when you are activated, it is hard. It's like if you if you get a new SIM card, brand new SIM card, don't activate it if you don't want to use, you know, be using it. Because when you activate it, then it can expire. Okay? So eventually you activate it, it begins to read. It begins to send you messages. Your call credits is low. Please press one. You know, you don't want that. You don't want to have all those things. Keep your SIM card locked. Keep it packed, locked. Until you're ready to open it. Until your wedding day, you're ready to open it. You say, right now, I am now activated. You know, then you can make all the calls you want. You can make all the calls, long distance call, whatever I call. But don't be doing those calls. All those calls you're going to be, the people do, and they're hiding, and they're doing. Say, why would you make a call on your phone with your own credit, and you're hiding? Because there's something weird that you're, you're doing. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's, it's huge. It's very, very important. You know, so again, you know, the imagery are things that, that can help you. I know, you know, brothers are reading sorts of songs where they want to get engaged. And chapter four, verse one, your hair is like a flock of goats descending from the Mount Mount Gilead. Your teeth are like a flock of sheep, just shown. They just shape, shape them. You know, coming, you know, from, from, from the washing. Each has its twin. Not one is alone. Your neck is like tall. They be built with elegance. And, and on each, a thousand shields. You know, I, for, you know, for, you know, for, for, for the, for the, um, um, you know, Israelites, this is very complimentary. Now, for us today, you have to find something very complimentary, you know, you know, um, you know complimentary. But one thing you need to know is that all these descriptive terms are, they will fade. If you're going to love somebody because their hair is so coily and bouncy, a time will come, they will start falling out, they will turn gray. If you love somebody because, oh, I just like her shape, I like his, his, his shape, if they will come, she will become what they call a robot. You know, she will become a robot, like Nigeria called a robot. If, if you like a guy who well, I like his biceps, I like her, go take a look at Arnold Schwarzenegger, 2021. 
or similar standard 2021, then we'll tell you what age can do. You know, and that was, that's why, you know, Peter encouraged the disciples. I, as disciples were looking at those Greek women who had done, their, everything is all about physical appearance, their hair, jewelry, everything, which is okay, it's great. And Nigerians know how to do it. I mean, if you go to our parties, man, it's lavish. But, but, but the Bible said, that don't let your beauty, that is not all about it. Let it come from something inside. Let it come from something inside that cannot fade, that cannot work. In fact, the older a woman gets, the more I'm, I'm, more, I'm actually more attracted to my wife now than I was attracted to her 24 years ago. We were, you know, um, August 2nd, maybe 24 years that, that, you know, that, that we got married. I'm actually more attracted to her now, more now than whatever. It's amazing. You know, she, I'm looking at her like, this woman is so pretty. Like, she has gray and everything. We're like, oh man, she's so, hmm. I mean, if she's here, <laughs> If you see right now, I'm not going to you know, I'll just be looking. I'll just, I mean, I just like, wow, man, lucky me. You know what I mean? You know, you know what? Yes, oh, she's 52 years old. She's 52 years old, but she's actually more attractive, really, that, you know, that she was, that she was. You know, and that is because of her heart. She's so loving. She's so caring. She's so giving. She's so encouraging. She's everything I am not. And I'm not ashamed to talk about it. She's everything. She's so accommodating. I mean, people like me more when they meet my wife. And they probably say, well, if she can marry him, I guess it's okay. You know, whatever. You know, so she's, and that is how it is. And just two days ago, we were going for staff meeting. No, on Wednesday, we were going to teach school of mission. And I was dressed, I dressed up and I come back. You know what he said? He said, honey, you're so handsome. Oh, man, I'm like, oh, man, if not for this meeting now, man. Ah, you know? <laughs> So, guys, um, uh, you, some of you guys are looking like you don't know what, what, what I'm talking about. You know, <laughs> that is the message. So, you, you have three options. You have three options. You know, you, you, know, you, you can take some sort of songs as just um, a collection of love stories or, or love, love poems by different people. That's sort of be recited like a drama. Or, or, you know, or, or, you, or you can take it as an allegory. Anytime you see my beloved talk about God and the church, Jesus Christ and me, Israel and whatever. Then when you talk about, when you see the war hair, I don't know what you're going to think about. If you see the breast, I don't know what you're going to think about. Whatever you're going to think about. But you can also think about that. It's just, a, it's who we are. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the best and the peace. Best and the peace, 101. In the Bible. <laughs> you know what I mean? The Bible talks about everything. It's just who we are. It's how we talk. It's what goes through our mind. And somebody has been generous enough to, you know, to put down what you are thinking. You know, what you are thinking, what you don't want to say. Somebody has written it down in a holy book, so you have no excuse. And God is saying, it is okay to have these thoughts. It is okay to worry about, but make sure you have them the right way, the right time. And, and because that is, God has made us to, to be a communal being. You know, we, 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 you know, we commune. Sometimes some brothers are discipling, you know, I, I'm a campus ministry, uh, the best ministry in the whole world. And, um, and the brothers come to me and say, oh, bro, I don't know. I, you know, I'm having, um, you know, lustful thoughts. Uh, I say, uh, who? Uh, about one sister. Or oh, really, I never rebuke them for saying that. I say, well, I say, bro, that means you're activated. I, do, do you like that sister? Mm, yes, I do. Yeah, I say, bro, you're activated. <laughs> Your, your brain is activated, whatever. I said, bro, that, that is the only way that one day you're going to be a father and mother and you're going to to that sister. If this doesn't happen, you will never leave. You know, so that's, you know, have you ever seen dogs in heat or animals in heat? We have the same thing too. We begin to sweat. You're under sister, you are shaking. You don't know what to say anymore. If the brother says she will see the sister off to, you know, to the bus stop after campus devotional, he saw him off to the bus stop they saw her off, saw her off for her home, and they were talking and talking. Then the sister saw him off back again to the bus stop. And when they were back on campus again, the brother said, let me see you again. I said, guys, something is about to happen. And now they are married, and, and they're leading the campus ministry in Abuja. You know, so that is how it happened. So let's talk about it openly. Let's talk about it, um, you know, freely. Uh, it's not insane to have those feelings. Uh, and, and, you know, and I'm going to be very, uh, you know, um, explicit. You know, you see, if we don't talk, you know, talk about it openly, people are going to go and get um, answers somewhere else. So in my ministry, they know me. 
He brought us no meat. This is how we talk about it. And, and I'm going to say something that you guys might probably cringe. Let me, let me just say this because it's, it's real. And you guys, a brother came to me, um, a 17 year old brother, and he came up to me and he came very discouraged. He was like, Bro, what happened to you? He said, I think I'm insane. He said, What's it? I said, I woke up in the morning and I had the discharge on the bed. I said, well, What are you talking about? He said, I ejaculated. I said, Really? Wait, wait, did you masturbate? He said, No. I've never done that before. Did you have any dream where I said, no, I don't. I said, bro, bro, what happened to you is, is normal. Okay, your, brother, your, your body, you are growing out of adolescence and your body is beginning. Sometimes the, the brothers will, will, you know, will start having some kind of you know, a particular odor or particular uh, scent. See, that's too, with the, you know, with the, the development. If you've ever, ever gone to a, a, an elementary school in a class, uh, you see that there's a particular scent that you start. That's adolescent scent. You know, they, 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 they begin to have hair here and there. So what do I what do I do? I buy them roll on um something like, like this. I try to do that. I say, bro, if they can afford, I say, bro, can I buy you this so I can smell better? You know, because they are growing in a man, they're, they're men now. So why would I want to hide something like that from them? Then they'll go and find out somewhere else. The sisters do the same thing. They come to my wife and they, they, they will see them giggling, and when I come in, they keep right. I know what they're talking about. So it's this time, I know what they're talking about. And you know, so let's talk about this. And that's why my ministry, somebody's going to date like tomorrow, somebody's going to date again next, you know, you know, the next week. I have so many dating couples coming up. And they're all pure. Somebody in my ministry is getting married right now. As I said, and that's why I, you know, my 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 you know, my 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 wife is not here, she has to go for the wedding. I said, okay, let me stay at home and hang out with you guys. You know, they are all from my campus ministry, baptized there and every single thing. So I'm happy. I have a brother leading the church in Abuja. They were, they were, they were both from the campus ministry, and there they are now married. Another one leading the church in Calabar, campus ministry. Another one, you know, leading lead the church in Kaduna, campus ministry. Another one leading the church, um, a campus ministry in, in a place called Inori, campus. So I have a lot of my campus ministers married and whatever because we talk about this stuff in Calabar, in Yenegua. They are all young ministers right now, evangelists, women ministry leader, all from the campus ministry, and they fell in love because I also fell in love in the campus ministry. Remember, I want the campus ministry. They don't need campus ministry or whatever. So let's start talking about it. It's in the Bible for a reason. When people start behaving funny, start whatever, there's a reason. They are falling in love. Sometimes it might be infatuation, but let's guide them. You know, so, so that they don't start doing crazy stuff behind. My, my ministry is so open. It's so open that we, we are even converted people who are same-sex attracted. Mm -hmm. Ministry. And we also have kingdom kids who are same-sex <clears throat> attracted. They are, they are not attracted to girls, but they are pure. They, they, they fight to remain pure, you know, whatever. You know, so, and, and, and my prayers are, you know, one day they are just like Guy Hammond, uh, with which we have invited, you know, they, they have a deep group and every single thing. You know, I pray just like Guy Hammond, they will, they, if, if they so desire, they will get married to, to sisters and they will be able to have um, another you know, form of life. But if, if they choose to, to remain single, amen. But, but just have to, you know, you know, you know pure. And I think we're able to successfully do this because we talk about these things openly. And they come openly to share that, hey, this is me. I mean, you want young disciple, after one year, we came from whole people to do the communion. I say, hey, this is what I've been struggling with all my life. It might not go, it's not going to go, but I just want you guys to know I'm free. And everybody starts clapping, you know, clapping. We have to keep this conversation open. We have to keep it, because the Bible kept it open. You know, you know like, it can't be like Solomon. Who, who, who want to um, love people with, with fame, with money, who just go, you know, go, going after his, his, his mind because he's, he's in that ecclesiastic uh, you know, no point under the sun. Okay, let's put people above the sun to see that there's something bigger out there. God bless you.